Hi, this is Andrew Klein with another Klein Make Learn Good video tutorial series for you. Uh, this video series, which is going to be 16 videos in length, and yes, you heard that right, 16 videos in length, uh, is going to cover how to take a shot from Maya, in this case I'll be using Autodesk Maya 2012, uh, how to render that shot in uh, Mental Ray, uh, using render passes and render layers, and how to then composite that shot in Adobe After Effects, as we see here. So uh, video one, just to kind of give you an overview, is uh, going to take a look at the entire parts of the pipeline. Uh, we're going to overview what compositing does and why we need it, uh, and determine kind of what we need in each shot. Video 2 is going to cover the difference between render passes and render layers, uh, some of the basics, how to change visibility, render settings, and uh, set shader overrides. We'll also look at how to associate passes to uh, render layers. Video 3 is going to look at uh, hiding foreground elements and associating them to a master layer. So for instance here, how I can take uh, my character and uh, make sure that only this character renders out and how I can then separate it out from the background and only have my background render. Uh, in that video, we're also going to take a look at our render settings. Render settings such as in the Passes tab, how to create the direct associated passes with the master layers. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at how to calculate out a depth pass, uh, the settings for the depth pass, and uh, also how to uh, make sure that you've calculated the correct depth for compositing so that you can do things like blur and fog effects. Uh, in video 5, we're going to look at how to create masks. Now, we can use these masks to, uh, for a variety of purposes, change color, uh, to cut things out. Um, I use masks oftentimes for compositing purposes for all sorts of things, and we'll see a bunch of reasons for that. Uh, this might include changing the color of a character's skin, uh, creating a mask to outline and maybe cut out parts of the sky, uh, and also, as I'm going to show, how to create god rays with that as well. So we're going to take a look at those elements. Uh, the next video, uh, video 6, is going to cover a basic occlusion pass, and uh, we'll take a look at occlusion images. Uh, here's an example of an occlusion pass. So we'll look at the uh, basic settings for this. Uh, video 7 and 8 uh, will be two separate videos kind of covering some specialized topics with occlusion. We're going to look at uh, how to avoid transparent objects in occlusion in video 7, and in video 8, how to cut out uh, alphas when using uh, occlusion passes. It's kind of a tricky little part of this. I want to make sure I can cover all of that. Video 9, uh, we're really going to get into detail here on breaking out the foreground character uh, and how to separate out the foreground character, how to create a pass to just capture the character's shadows, and how to create a pass that can capture the character's reflections uh, to give you an example of what this looks like. Uh, here is the character rendered out uh, just by himself, isolated on an alpha. Uh, we're going to look at how to separate that out. We're going to take a look at how to generate just the reflections, which I think is probably hard to see here. There's a little arm reflected in that window, if you can see it in the video. Uh, and then uh, finally, how to do a shadow casting pass, uh, how I can create just the cast shadow. We'll look at how to do that for compositing purposes. Uh, that will be that uh, video 9. Uh, actually, those are actually videos uh, 9, 10, and 11. Sorry looking through my guide here. Um, then in video 12, what we're going to look at is uh, batch naming and uh, how we can set up dynamic file prefixes for batch rendering, just how to make sure all of our passes are set and that we have all of our render settings ready to do a batch render. Uh, videos 13, 14, 15, and 16 are going to be all After Effects elements. Now you can composite with Photoshop, After Effects, Nuke. Uh, you know, I have a whole bunch of compositing programs that I work with. Uh, Nuke, uh, After Effects, Photoshop kind of being among those. Um, you know, I use these programs for various purposes. I think After Effects is one of the easier ones to get into, so I'm going to cover After Effects here. Uh, what I want to look at in uh, video 13 is how to import our elements into After Effects, how to bring in the individual parts of the renders. You can see all of the parts here. How I can bring those all in, uh, how I can bring in my 
uh, foreground elements and set up my base composition. You'll notice in my composition settings I'm going to be using a 32-bit per channel composition and I want to talk about the difference between 32-bit per channel and 8-bit per channel because I think that's kind of important to understand for exposure usage. So we're going to take a look at that. Then in video uh, 14 we're going to take a look at setting up our layering. So what I have here if I peel away my layers you'll see all of the parts that I'm actually using on this. We're going to take a look at starting from the beginning, you know, changing some exposure elements, and uh, setting up all of these layers, bringing them in, and the different blend modes that you have to use to be able to create your lighting setups appropriately. In video 15, we're going to look at the process of color grading, which is the ability to add, as you see here, little gradients, uh, additional color elements, essentially like painting on top of your scene, to provide extra illumination and color. And uh, we'll cover the color grading process here inside of After Effects. You'll notice that I use, make heavy use of masks in this process to cut out individual elements, masking out shadows and kind of where they fit. So here I have masks just to kind of cover these shadows so I can tint those shadows blue. We'll cover all of that in this process. You see here as well, I've got my foreground elements and how I'll be able to add in my shadow, then the character, tone the character through these different render passes that I have. There's my deep shadows from my occlusion. Here's my background occlusion. A little bit of extra illumination. I kind of use the mask to foreground light here. This is part of the color grading process. And then also to uh, overlay some specularity and a little bit of vignetting at the end of this. So we'll kind of cover that. Uh, in video 15. And then in the final video, video 16, we'll talk about how to add all of this to the render queue and some settings that you might want to use for exporting out your videos. So um, that's what you can expect in this series of videos. This has been video one, which is the introduction of the process. Video two, which comes immediately after this, we'll talk about the difference between render passes and render layer basics. And we're going to look at uh, ways to break out different parts of a scene. So stay with me. Video two coming right up.